Well, why don't you ask me? Hmm? If I've heard from Pamela or not. Oh, have you? No. I shall be staying in town from now on. So at least visitors and you will be spared these early starts. Well, we have been giving the dawn chorus an alarm call. Oh. Well, I suppose it's something. It's not Hagadan. Hagadan? Of course it's not Hagadan. She's staying in Rome with the Dennises. If you don't know Pamela's whereabouts, you must know Hagadan's. Well, it's as well to know where the enemy is. Have you been making inquiries? Discreetly, yes. I'm grateful for your concern, Don. But I don't want you snooping for me. I'm not interested in Hagadan's whereabouts. Only why you should be. Well, I could be after a job at Infelt's. He's virtually running it. You should be after a bigger one at Blythe's. That would make more sense. Oh, now, wait a minute. It's all in the line of business. Not very important. Just a question of Commonwealth relations. Now, whose Commonwealth is it, anyway? <laughs> It's a hard one for this time of a morning, Caswell. You MPs are feather-bedded. When I was your age, I was at my desk at seven, including Sundays. Now, it's not much after that now. <laughs> All right, Chris. Now, what do you say? As long as you don't make a habit of dawn parades. Good. I'll see that your expenses are covered. Now, when can you fly out? Well, uh, not before Thursday. Make it tomorrow. It's not as if the whips are stuck for lobby fodder these days. <laughs> Call me when you get there. What, here at the export board? Well, it's where I mostly am. <laughs> well, the wise old branch of Boy Construction Limited. Oh, now, don't you start. I get enough of that from my enemies. <laughs> what are you bothering about? Ken got Africa. I'm not blocking his way across the dark continent. Look at you. The condescension. You're so damn sure. He's wasting his time, aren't you? Out of your way in Africa? while you play politics with your European consortium, and Caswell pretends his, his king commerce, pressing his political buttons and yearning for ermine, and a front stall seat at the next opening of Parliament. For heaven's sake, Don, if Ken digs up an odd job or two, well, good luck. We'll try and fit them in, and you can help. How's that? You really no idea what he's on to, have you? Why do you suppose Frank Hagadan's gone chasing out there? Not just to advertise he's no longer with Pamela. I'm sorry, John. Go on. I said, go on. Well, he's obviously found out what Kenneth knew four days ago. About what's going on in Megalia. Hmm, I didn't realize so much had been written about it. Well, dams are news. <laughs> big dams, big news. Imagine what the press would make of it now if they only knew what had happened. <laughs> Not to mention me, Mr. Fly. All in good time, Miss Weldon. Have you heard anything about your promotion board yet? Not officially. I was um, asked my views. If they're given the weight they merit, you should have something to celebrate. Thank you. And now, let's see how efficient the um, Commonwealth Office is. I want all there is on the Prime Minister of Magalia, the Minister of Public Works, and the Minister without Portfolio. Well, don't you want to take any of this down? Oh, you want all there is on uh, Jordan Cabola, Bobo Naranda, and Copiloque. Oh, I didn't know their names. Thank you, Miss Weldon. That'll be all. Let me have it today. I, um... I take it this is official, Mr. Bly. Oh, yes. You could let me have a minute on it. Well, I don't see why not. Susan. John. I shan't disfigure the landscape for very long. You shouldn't be here at all at this time. I am a member of the National Export Board. I seem to recall you once telling me about some of your African contemporaries at the London School of Economics, especially one Cabola. Well? What do you want, John? A solo performance of We Shall Overcome? How well did you know him? 
we chew the fat on politics? It's all very earnest and idealistic. Not your world at all. Why? I enjoy meeting prime ministers. I wish to give a helping hand to a poor emerging nation. The meek shall inherit the earth. Not with people like you about. This career thing, you know, is making you rather uncharitable, Susan. I hear you have some leave due. Some? Could you take it now? I'm sorry, John, if Pamela hasn't returned to you. But this is not a rabbitry for deserted husbands. I have no intention of taking my leave just now. Have you ever thought how high that pile of paper will get by the time you're 60? John? I was on my way. I was on my way to see you, Caswell. Oh, well, uh, come through. That's the minute you asked for. I was just uh, asking Miss Weldon if she'd come to Africa with me on a trade mission. Hmm? What trade mission? Mine. To uh, Megalia. Well, don't you think that the completion of the Megalia High Dam is of importance to this country? Well, uh, come, uh, come through, John. We'll, we'll discuss it in my office. And as we're in mine, I'll tell you now, I have no intention of going to Africa, either privately on leave or professionally on business. Staff morale is a bit low this morning, Caswell. I thought your job was a service. A public, Sir John, not personal. I take it, Mr. Blair, you want this for the record on file? What do you bet, Miss Weldon? I don't like being pushed and pressured in front of my own officials, John. One official. Well, what goes on between you two is your own affair. As long as it's confined to the bedroom. Oh, don't just a damn bigot. Well, you do well to be discreet. Scandal has a habit of boomeranging. Especially for a man who has renounced all his business uh, commitments to take an office of state. And yet has just taken a penthouse above Bly offices. Even I have a right to appear d'atteur. With an intercom system linked with every senior executive of the Bly Group. Come to the point, John. What is it? I know what Kenneth is up to in Africa. So do you. And we both know that he is a boy in a man's world. I also suspect that you know that the minister is especially concerned that a British firm should come to the rescue of Megalia about the completion of the High Dam. I want that firm to be Bly's. I wish you well. And you'll release Miss Weldon? Mistresses are for spare time. She has a very valuable contact there. You heard what she said, John. I'm broad-minded. No. Then I shall ask the minister to release her. I uh, hear the penthouse pied de terre is very lavish for an office. Will you come in, Miss Weldon? Africa, today? And tomorrow the world. Well, you know Sir John, Mr. Henderson, or should by now. All the same, I'm a non-starter. And tomorrow's a rather special occasion. Tribal? Hmm? Never mind. All the same, you wouldn't catch me passing up a chance to weekend in Africa. I've always wanted to see a tribal wedding. All that dancing, those initiation ceremonies. Hmm. Well, it's not the marriages that worry me. It's the sudden deaths. I don't wish to be mistaken for a soldier of fortune. It's all quiet, where you're going. Yes, but well, you can count me out. For once, I'm saying no, loud and clear. Yourself? Or do you want me to pass the message? Hello? That's all right, Alan. Sir John wants a booking on tonight's West Africa flight. Yes, via Lagos. Three seats, please. One for Sir John, one for Mr. Henderson, and the third is for a Miss Weldon. Miss Susan Weldon. You will confirm, Alan. Thank you. If he wants a, a baggage master for an extra marital honeymoon, he can get somebody else. I would like Sir John to ask the minister for your release. In case the minister in turn asked you? But one says no to a minister only in extremis. And if one says no, the reason must be more valid than your friendship. Perfectly natural and above board, though it is, with Sir John. 
You'll be making out next that my presence in Africa is a matter of national necessity. Well, have no doubt if I don't, Sir John will. Look, I don't want to take my leave now. You can go in the firm's time, Miss Weldon. The National Export Board isn't a firm. And nor am I employed by Blyze. And if the board had its new secretary, I'm quite sure he wouldn't permit its officials to be used in this way. Oh, don't worry. You're not being corrupted. Well, I'd say it comes very close to a, to a, a misuse of public resources. You do know what's behind all this. Given one guess, I'd say money. You see, Miss Weldon, the Magalian High Dam is well behind schedule, and the present contractors, the Scandinavians, are as eager to pull out as the Magalian government are to suspend their contract. Now, somebody else will have to finish the job. Bly Construction Limited. Oh, oh, I don't know about that. Let's say a British firm. British prestige is on the line, Miss Weldon. I'll sing Land of Hope and Glory at the proms any day, Mr. Bly but I will not go to Africa. Hmm. Well, it's your right, of course. Thank you. Only do be clear what it is you're doing. As chairman of this board, it's important for me to know what transpires out there. What about Sir John? He's a member of the export board. Only on this issue, more responsible to another board. Blythe. You mean that uh, Sir John and the country's intentions are at odds. <laughs> Frequently. And you want me to keep a close watch on Sir John? For you? I've seen for some time that you'll go a long way in the service, Miss Will. The trouble with high dams, Mr. Bly, is their very size and importance. They are their own progress reports. <coughs> Ours is well behind schedule. Thank you. Thank you. And the whole country, the world, knows it. The company that takes the job of finishing it will have to start in less than two months. Could yours? Ah, that's a firm condition, is it, two months? Absolutely. Well, it's, uh, it's possible. Um, just possible, Mr. Lokwe. We'd naturally... Um, we'd naturally need a, a day or so to, to confirm. I beg your pardon, Mr. Blair. Uh, I'm sorry, what, what I mean is that I, I'm sure we would be able to clear the decks in time. Another of your competitors, Mr. Blair? No, I wouldn't say that exactly. Uh, Gareth, I see you in cornering all the sunshine. John, may I introduce Mr. Loque, Minister Without Portfolio? Sir John Wilder. How do you do? I've heard a lot about you in London, Mr. Loque. Till then, I thought our government was the only one with ministers without portfolio. Here is the question of economics, Sir John. One minister doing the work of five and treading on everyone else's toes. Sir John is my fellow joint managing director at Bly's, Kofi. You and Kenneth together must make a formidable team. Mr. Weldon? Uh, Sir John Wilder. Ah, yes. Uh, Stanley meets Livingston. So, I don't know about you, but I'm not waiting. And you, Sir John, you are a Scotch with water man. Splendid. I'm relieved you didn't say on the rocks. I had the choice, Sir John, between Harvard and Oxford. I chose Oxford and learned some very bad habits. The Scotch on the rocks was not one of them. Thank you. If I had known you were coming, I would have laid on transport from the airport. Sir John revels in surprise. And you're very shrewd, Kenneth. We had no idea he was calling up reinforcements. He has to be watched, don't you, Kenneth? Well, the Russians have a full team here. I've lost count of the Chinese mission. So I was feeling lonely. Never feel out of it here, Kenneth. The British are always welcome. As well as anybody else? All who come to help. And for whatever reason. Ah. 
Now we are in deep water. Now who knows, Sir John? At least you are very direct. I can be as devious as the next man, Mr. Loque. Even though I was only educated at a minor English public school in the aircraft industry. You have a dam which you wish to be completed. Kenneth and I represent a firm which can do that job. With no strings. Not without strings, Sir John. Nobody offers anything in this world without strings. You rich countries are like parents offering pennies to the children. Shillings in these days of inflation, if only we'd behave ourselves and conform to your standards. Which are not so creditable. Exactly. By rich countries you mean Western? I see you have been doing your homework. What you mean is that I was educated somewhere else besides Oxford. Yes, I had a year at Moscow and no, I don't mean only the West. It would be ironic if the Russians or the Chinese were to get the job of completing the dam when uh, most of the delays have been caused by those of your countrymen who share their political faith. My only concern, Sir John, is to see the dam working. I've made inquiries into your company's present commitments. I wonder if you could take on the high dam without overstretching yourselves. That's my worry. We know our capacity, Kofi. Supposing you were chosen, Sir John, could you take over in less than two months? I'd appreciate Sir John's view, Kenneth. Two months? We'd be damned dilatory if we couldn't. Would you excuse me a moment? Certainly. One would have to be up before the alarm clock went off to put one over on him. Oh, I don't know. He's ordinary flesh and blood like you and me. You don't sound so sure, Kenneth. Blythe must be rich in managerial talent, being able to afford both its managing directors to negotiate one project. Oh, checks and balances, you know, we like to keep an eye on each other. It's in the company's interest. But what's in it for you that makes it so attractive? Money, prestige, a bit of both. Look, I'll draft an estimated completion date for you by tomorrow and give you my personal assurance now that we could start inside two months. That's better, Mr. Bly. Much better. Splendid. At least now you will be in the running. Miss Weldon? Yes? The wrong... But I've only just this minute moved in. I see. Very well. I was just telling Kenneth, Sir John, that we must arrange your visit to the High Dam. Splendid. The sooner the better. The day after tomorrow, perhaps. Why not tomorrow morning? Well, tomorrow we have other visitors, Sir John. Our competitors? One of them. Well, I hardly think we shall be at each other's throats. I have no objections if you have them. Well, business competition can be civilized. You'd better tell Sir John who the competitor is. Another British firm. Infels, a Mr. Hagedan. Well. Until tomorrow, then, Sir John. Bye. Kenneth. Goodbye. Why wasn't I told? Well, I should have thought that Caswell would have cabled you so I get off your pedestal. It would appeal to his cruel streak. No, don't drag father into it. You do realize that you very probably bungled this. Merely by showing up. I can understand the suspense, all the one-sidedness of it. It's worse than a sick joke. You against the Russians and the Chinese? And Hagadan. I'd have thought it was enough to know that he was out here and not with... Not with who? No, it doesn't matter. That's your problem, isn't it? You haven't any stomach. You always flinch and you always will. That is why I'm here. All right, I was going to say Pamela. And now you have. You came because you want to rub Hagadan's face in the scrub. Because you have to. It's not enough that I might. You? Or that Hagadan or I or any other British competitor might beat the foreign competition. Oh, don't start putting up the Union Jack here, Kenneth. You might get a spear in your bag. In fact, all your coming's done is to divide our own side. Our side? The British. 
flies our own company. Even Loque could see that. Even Loque? Don't underestimate him. He's a young man to be reckoned with. Yes, and how do you think I looked him now? White, British, faltering, timid. Hello, Kenneth. Well, oh, what's the uh, white minority's favourite tipple here? Or whatever it is, yes, please. Well, uh, welcome to the land where Blyes compete with Blyes. And what's an odd airfare to Africa between friends? Tell Kenneth what we have in mind, Don. Well, I didn't know we had. Well, tell him what you have in mind. Oh, no, John, I want this cleared up now. Before it gets too set. If there were only time. But I have a pressing dinner engagement for which I can't be late. Protocol being what it is in these parts. I suppose he's dining with the Prime Minister. Oh, no, not tonight. Tonight he's dining with the British High Commissioner. <laughs> his Excellency sent his own card to pick us up at the airport. Well, where's that drink? Come on, let's go to the bar. Two scotches, please. Well, I won't ask why you're here, Don. It's enough that he is. Oh. I'm Dog's body. Tag along, Donald, and make it all look respectable. Three's a crowd sort of idea. I wonder. Master, mistress, and faithful Don. Okay. Is, um, is it the only reason she's here? Well, she's not here for Oxfam. You know, I refuse to come. I positively refuse to come. So I see. You don't know that Pamela's left him. But it was all over London the day I left. Oh, and I'm getting ready to jump. I will, don't do it here, Don. The ambulances are vintage models and take a long time coming. Then reserve yourself, one of the quickest ones. He's set on landing this job, Kenneth. Satisfies his lust for conquest. This way he can dish you and Caswell and Hagadan all at one go and put the Russians and Chinese under his belt. That's how he sees it. You bet he does. <laughs> Where's all that old loyalty, Don? Loyalty? Didn't that go out with wide bottom trousers? Oh, look out. Here comes Master Rags to riches himself. Hello, Ken. Hello, Donald. Heard about the royal arrival? Did they fire a 21-gun salute? Or was that just a car I heard back firing? What'll you drink, Frank? No, no, let me. No, no, this one. Then it's every man for himself. The local gentleman straight ahead is Naranda. The Minister of Public Works, hmm? That's the chap. It's his signature you'll need on the contract. It's been put about that he's gained three stones since independence. Fairly dependably Anglophile, but touchy about protocol. And it would be as well not to make too much about your meeting with Loque earlier on. Your Bush telegraph does work well, doesn't it? We don't miss much, you know, not much. You know, revolution now and then, but otherwise not much. I hear that he and Loque are jostling. Their corridor game is not yet as subtle as ours back home in Whitehall. We must give them time to polish up their double standards. <laughs> Nail down. Now, allow me to introduce you, Sir John. This is Bobo Naranda, our Minister of Public Works, Sir John Wilder. Alderson, the commercial attaché. And Chris Roney, one of our younger MPs from Westminster. He's out here doing research for a series of articles. And a speech or two, I wouldn't wonder. Oh, uh, Roney, come with me, will you? There's someone over here I'd like you to meet. So, you're coming to see our dam tomorrow, or what there is of it? Well, uh, yes. The minister without portfolio is known for his enterprise, uh, but like anyone else, he has to come through me for facilities to visit a dam. You know, it surprises me that so many are so eager to take a job on, uh, so many private companies like yours. The Russians and the Chinese, their motives are obvious, uh, but not yours. Well, I should worry about motives, think about price and completion date. Uh, the present contractors have suffered, Sir John. And I can't guarantee that agitators won't make life just as uncomfortable for whoever takes a job on. 
We are not looking for a sinecure. Oh, <laughs> it could never be that. Our vehicles disappear, supply lorries have been run off the roads. Even the cooks at the work camps were subverted to leave. Uh, none of this is news to you. I wouldn't be worth my job as managing director of my company if it were. Uh, it can't be profit, which would be modest at best. The present contractors would find it more profitable to pull out. Under Clause 32, I have the power to suspend their contracts when I feel like. They'll be happy when I do. So what's in it for us who wish to take over? Hmm? For me? Well, you could put it down to bloody-mindedness. Or the white man's burden. I'm beginning to see, Sir John. The white man's burden is really the other white man. Frank. Grub's good, but we'll be on our way home the day after tomorrow. John having sewn it all up. Want a bet? Hmm? No, no, look, it's the brandy talking. Don's and, uh, back leading the Wilder fan club. You don't know him? Hagadan. You don't know what you're up against. You think you know him, but you don't. But all you can see is the man who gave you the push. One of his, you don't mind my saying so, more enlightened decisions. Yeah, so, good night. <laughs> oh, I'll leave him, Ken. <laughs> He doesn't get much chance to sound off, do you, Don? Huh? And if all he's got to brag about is Wilder... Oh, well, you'll see. Three to one. Uh -huh. In tenors. That Wilder leaves Africa a chaser knight of the realm. No, no bet. <laughs> You're <laughs> And look, it's, it's a bumpy road in the morning, especially with the hangover, so go on. I know what I'm doing, Kate. You don't even know if the comrades here are Russians or Chinese. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> But what makes you think Wilder's got it all wrapped up? Well, look at you. And Kenneth, well, where are you? While John sups with his excellency and whoever. You know whoever? Well, make a damn good guess as whoever really matters. A commercial attaché, for one. Well, big deal. And an itinerant backbench MP. Again, big deal. Mm. And Naranda. Well, I ask. Steady on, Frank. Those little yellow ears are twitching. Well, yeah. let them. You know Naranda, Donald? What do you think? Well, Sir Johnny Wilder's back in the wrong black in Naranda, eh, Kenneth? And you can tell him that from me. John doesn't back losers, black or white. <laughs> I don't mind betting you that he's always at least six moves ahead of you. Oh, come off it, Don. He knows as much about Africa as my Aunt Dora. And she's never left Luke. <laughs> uh -huh. Then why do you suppose he brought Weldon here? She's not on holiday, you know. She's here in the government's time. Oh, this I find interesting. What? Well, this casual Kenneth look. Drinks all round and you couldn't keep your ears off me. Oh, and as to concentrate, you're slurring your words, Don. <laughs> Never mind, Kent. You were saying? Yes. Now. Oh, well, what was I saying? Oh, yes. Who's Naranda? Can't remember that bumpy road. No, I mean it. <laughs> Who's Naranda? The Minister of Public Works. The man whose name goes on all the contracts. Oh, is that all? He signs, after others have given the OK. Trust his ruddy excellency to be so out of touch he invites the wrong minister to meet one. <laughs> and who's the right one? Well, the one we were talking about over dinner, uh, Kofi Lokwe. Now... Ooh, the, the minister without portfolio. Himself. Now, why does Sir John bring Weldon? If he's not uh, up to it. Ask him yourself. Oh, don't get up for me, Donald. Oh. Frank, Kenneth. <laughs> it's an early start tomorrow, Don, seven o'clock. Oh, oh no. you'll stay for a drink, John. <coughs> oh, no, have this on me. Um, save again. I'll have a brandy. No, no, it's my shop. We missed you, John. Well, you seem to have been making up for it. <laughs> you and the Chinese. <laughs> Well, we've been waiting all the evening for the Russians to show up. I suppose they weren't with you at the British High Commissioners. No, it's their table manners he can't stand. He's exceptionally British. They should rechristen him the European High Commissioner, shouldn't they? <laughs> should they, Frank? Well, I mean, who the hell is he representing if he's helping you? <sighs> against me.
<laughs> well, it's something to have a nice warm bed to go up to. <laughs> I should think the problem here would be to find a cool one. <laughs> is, uh, is the lady from Whitehall staying very long? That might come under the Official Secrets Act. But only just. <laughs> Good night, Frank. It's Don's considered opinion. We'll all be on our way home day after tomorrow. Really? Mm. Oh. <coughs> Don't worry, Frank. You, too, may be able to dine with His Excellency one day. You know, it's this damn class system again. So first, you have to get your knighthood. Frankie. Poor Donald. I should say he's a suitable case for treatment for the United Nations Commission on Human Rights. The yeah, seed of rebellion's there, all right. It was. Tonight he got drowned in alcohol. You no more believe that than I do. Otherwise, why plant that bit about Loki being the man who matters? Did I plant that? For onward transmission. Now, why should I do that? You've been drinking there all night, and you haven't even found out how far Hagadan's got. Oh, Hagadan's not bad, but you get to know him. Hot air. Have to uh, underrate the opposition. Meaning me? No, John, meaning me. Loke was our man, not Miranda. No, Kenneth. Loke's the man. Uh, and we'll get nowhere unless we um, buy our way in. I see. A kickback for services rendered. Mm. And you have to be fairly sophisticated, like a villa on the Riviera worth uh, 50,000 or so. Loque is rather sensitive about the corruption charges flying around the new African state. And Hagadan told you all this? Oh, yes. He knows his Africa out, Frank. He knows much more about the East End. He's a gutter boy. Now don't tell me you'd back Naranda against Loque. Naranda's in a spot, Loque's pushing his common knowledge. And Naranda's in for a big bite of the dust after his failure to keep the dam on schedule. So why? Get Henderson to put Wilder onto the right man. Now why do you think, Ken? It's my innate British sense of decency. I've known Kofi Loque for years. I knew him when Wilder was still making a mess of trying to build aeroplanes. So you give Wilder an equal start. I tell you, I'm a fair play man myself. You wouldn't give your grandmother a fair start to the lifeboats. We're all British here, Ken. First let's get rid of the Russians and then those little yellow perils and then... You know, I could have sworn that lift never went beyond the fourth floor. Young man. Hmm? Uh, Johnny Wilder gone modest or what? He's a penthouse man, if ever I saw one. Or a Blythe wielding the economy axe. No, it was probably taken. He came at short notice. He'd soon say it was untaken. Well, I'd say he didn't want to attract undue attention. Wilder? Bury in mind his travelling companion. You think that bothers him? Wilder doesn't take second best anywhere. His rooms or whatever. Or with whoever. <coughs> Shan't be a tick, Kenneth. And it's your turn anyway. Uh, my friend Sir John Wilder, he is in the penthouse, I take it? No, sir. He's on the fourth floor, room 407. Oh. Susan. Good night, John. I did hear once that he can't stand static heights. <laughs> he refused to meet somebody for lunch in the post office tower restaurant. 
Oh. Cheers, Kenneth. in the buckets, John? No, it's not my sort of game. Well, we always say if you want to really know your dam, you have to ride the buckets. The last one I was on, we used to call it the chicken run. You coming? I, I don't mind, Frank. Uh, you and I are expendable. John isn't. They'll have overalls of every size in the hut, John. They won't have parachutes, though. Well, let's go and get them. Only two can play at this game, Tom. It must be your public school system. Um, no, it's not that. Now, Hagadan never went to one. And Sir John's was, um, well, minor, borderline. Government House? The Prime Minister's personal secretary, please. Susan Weldon. Yes. Just give the name, I'm sure they'll speak. The trick is not to look down, Sir John. You can always shut your eyes. And now that you are a citizen, we must ensure that your stay in my country is as enjoyable as mine was in yours. Thank you, Prime Minister. <laughs> you can forget the formality, Susan. I am still Jordan Cobola. I remember. Remember what the other students called me? <laughs> Jordy. <laughs> the tutor found it difficult to believe I came from Newcastle. <laughs> Our high dam, Susan, is like a bone with two enormous dogs fighting over it, east and west. And Africa's no place for sentiment, Susan. We need the damn badly. Who builds it, who finishes it, is irrelevant. All that matters is that we have it working. Does that puzzle you? No, not really, not when you put it like that. Well, there's one thing that puzzles me. Why, you should come out here officially with Sir John. Now, I'd have thought Whitehall, your expert would, would be more inclined to encourage Mr. 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 Haggerton. After all, he represents an all-British consortium. And Sir John, a European consortium with only one British company in it. Lies. You didn't know this? No. But you still want me to see, Sir John. The damn symbol of Miranda lending us his private plane. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, you two would do better to think less of Miranda's <laughs> private plane than Lokway and his, in which the passenger is Hagadan. While I'm busy with the Prime Minister, Kenneth, you better persevere, and I suggest with some urgency with Lokway. He's obviously our man. 
an equally obvious thing on the make. Offer him some nice, juicy, personal kickback. It's always good to make doubly sure. Flies under the impression that they were set on tackling ministerial corruption in a big way here. We all of us have to take a chance sometime. Business is a chicken run. You, um... Yesterday you were discussing the personal gifts that smooth the gears of commerce. Um, it's something that I'm normally dead against, but on, on principle, but... Um, mm, but you make exceptions. In exceptional circumstances, yes. The high dam being one. Oh, I think so. Don't you? I mean, the socially right thing is to get the dam finished in the interests of all. And if that means considerations in the now, interests... What I'm trying to say, Kofi, is that if the public interest and that of a private individual coincide, um, it, it can't be all that wrong. Surely, can it? We're very hot on watching ministers' bank accounts here, Kenneth. Well, it, it's rumoured, and one can't prove anything, of course, but it, it's said that um, villas on the French Riviera are popular tokens of appreciation that harm nobody. So John's idea, or yours? Sorry, how do you mean? What you've just been telling me. Oh, mine? I'm a responsible director. And here we are, thinking we can learn from you. I sometimes wonder just what it is we're supposed to be learning. I was only too pleased on Susan Weldon's recommendation to see you, Sir John. However, it might be as well to postpone whatever we have to say to each other. Kofi Lokwi, as you know, is my minister without portfolio. A man of the highest integrity. I'm sure he is, Prime Minister. This is ill-judged and quite disgraceful. And I should like you and Mr Lokwe to know that Mr Kenneth Bly acted without the authority of the European Consortium which I represent. My most sincere apologies. I will reserve judgment until the matter has been thoroughly looked into, Sir John. He had no authority, Prime Minister. No authority whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> Four seven, please. Hello, John. I thought it was about time I took a holiday. 